So John and I were up at five o'clock this morning. Uh, Tad was telling us the cat always wakes him up and the cat held true. You, you heard it start meowing because it wanted out. So it was kind of funny this morning uh, to waking up to the cat as an alarm clock. Um, and Sue fixed us some breakfast this morning. We had a great conversation again, uh, like we did last night with uh, both Tad and Sue, our Warm Showers host. Uh, had an absolutely wonderful time. Uh, and one of the things that's kind of cool today is there's a the Deep Hollow alternate uh, we're going to take, but that Deep Hollow alternate was developed by Tad and the ACA accepted his his recommendation and it's on our maps so uh, uh, so we're definitely connected with Tad on the uh, with through the maps so which I thought was really 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 cool um, it's about uh, 60 degrees this morning so it's a little warmer than what it has and it's gonna get warm today so uh, uh, it's a little after 7 and we're on the road we really got to focus today because uh, uh, we got a we got a ride in front of us, but there is one problem: is uh, the campground getting into the campground that we want to get into uh, is going to prove to be a little difficult. So uh, uh, Tad was really curious as to how that ends up, so we'll let him know when we get there tonight. But. Uh, we're hoping that lodging doesn't become an issue for us this evening. So we're definitely operating outside of our comfort zone because we typically have that stuff prearranged, but uh, today is not the case. So we'll see what happens. So uh, last night, Tad looked at our maps and I'll kind of show it right here. But this deep hollow alternate it runs from Lithgow down to Wasik. He, su he suggested to ACA that uh, they put that change in and he never heard anything back from him. And so when he was looking at the maps, he asked if we had a current map. We said, oh, well, let's look, it was a 23 map. And they put Tad's suggested alternate route on the map. So I just wanted to say uh, to Tad, you know, great job contacting the ACA and helping all the bike tourists out that are doing the uh, Atlantic Coast Tour. Uh, when you look at the information that he gave us last night, it was obvious this was definitely the way to go. And uh, uh, so that's what we're doing. So, Ted, I know John, John, John and well, both of us say thank you. <laughs> so, thank you very much. You saved us about, what, nine, ten miles. Oh, yeah. And... A lot of climbing. Yes. So, yep. Yeah, we're very grateful and we're thankful. All right. Well, let's we'll see. It's the Tad alternate. Y yeah. Yeah. It's and our on our map is yeah well, the Tad alternate. Tad so, alternate. <laughs> all right. There you go. Well, here we are. Just nice, easy ride down the new coin phrase, the Tad alternate. The road is called, uh, the actual name of the road is Deep Hollow Road, which is fitting for what you can see here. I wish the camera had had the view that uh, John and I have. It, you just can't describe it, but uh, very, very nice road to ride down. We did some major descending on that rock road. You don't want to run off the edge of this. It's a straight drop off uh, down to the ditch. I'd say probably a good 70, 80 feet to the bottom. And it's just a drop off. How do you like the sign there? Boredom is a luxury. We're in uh, Wasik. Uh, New York, getting ready to get on the rail trail here. See John's on it already. But just as, these are one of those deep holler towns, kind of remind you of uh, 
what we experienced in Kentucky by an old grain mill right here along the railroad tracks. Looks like the tracks might be active still too. They look like they are on one. So, yeah, this is my kind of town. I could, I could see myself retiring in a place like this. Mm -hmm. So the uh, routes got us off on the uh, Harlem Valley Rail Trail. Uh, thing about rail trails is they're flat. So no hills and we're lucky it's paved. It's about a 10 mile trek on this asphalt uh, trail that we're on. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So we're just kind of going through a cutout here where the train used to go through. Got the camera turned on a little late there once I realized it. It's just nice and cool, the temperatures that rock never sees the sun so it's always at whatever temperature and just feels like air conditioning's on in here Ready? yeah over my left shoulder behind me is a sign that says welcome to new york which means one thing we just crossed into connecticut we didn't see a welcome to connecticut sign yet so we're gonna go back and do the new york one but uh yeah, we're in Connecticut now. Well, we thought there wouldn't be a Connecticut sign. And guess what we found? We found the Connecticut sign. So, yeah. We left New York. And now we're in Connecticut. This is our... Uh, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina... North Carolina, Virginia. Uh, what was after Virginia? Maryland. Maryland. No, no, Pennsylvania. Pen oh yeah, Pennsylvania. Maryland. Maryland. New York. And Connecticut. Yeah, nine. So we're in uh, Canaan, Connecticut small historic town just making our way to uh, Pleasant Valley Connecticut uh, that's close to where the campground is that we were wanting to stay at tonight uh, if the campground doesn't work out when we were in uh, I don't remember what town it was but some people on bikes stopped and talked to us and uh, gave us their phone number and they're not too far from the campground they said if you can't find any place to stay there then we could stay with them so we know we got lodging secured it's just a matter of where so it'll be interesting to see what happens when we get there yeah we're just on the highway it's got a wide shoulder or a decent shoulder most of the time so it's been real good you can see the mountains in the background behind the church there to the right. Uh, it's warmed up quite a bit. Uh, probably in low to mid 80s. Uh, Notice that probably in like the last uh, oh, half hour or so and it's 1.30. So it just kind of warmed up then. So yeah, still on the road, got a little ways to go. We've been coasting down this road for quite a while. We've been, it was like a six, seven mile climb with no brakes. It climbed and climbed and climbed. And then we got treated to this back world's way into the park where we're hoping to get into tonight. This is a real treat here. Absolutely gorgeous.
are camping tonight. And where where are we at? I forgot. We are in Riverton. Riverton, Riverton, Connecticut. Good God, we're going so fast. We don't even know where we're at. That's how good we are, folks. <laughs> but uh, uh, so I'm going to do a time lapse on the uh, setting up the uh, the campsite, just so you kind of see what we do when we get to do it. We didn't get to do it much this time, so. That's why we want to do it now. We don't know when it might happen again. Well, it's supposed to happen tomorrow. So, all right. There you We got company in our camp. Thank you. Thank you. We see him. Thank you. Yeah. We got a black bear. And there he is. I'm sure we're going to have company tonight in our camp. Yeah. You just keep going, fella. He's warm. Yeah, here comes the ranger, so he's all right. He knows yeah. here, he knows we're here, and uh, he's hot just like we are. We're keeping our distance and we're talking to him. And uh, yeah, here comes the ranger. So this is not my first encounter with him. We're not far from the Appalachian Trail and uh, I've had to deal with them before. So like I said, you see you keep your distance and as long as they know where you're at, you don't startle them, but that that's a big one. So that's cool. Okay, sorry. We got to do it again. Yeah. All so right. uh uh have you seen in the time lapse um, I kind of pointed off that direction early and I heard a, a, a loud noise, didn't really know what it was and then, uh, didn't worry about it anymore. And then all of a sudden, uh, off that direction, neighbors started yelling bear. And so that's probably what made the noise, just couldn't see it. So, uh, I'll let John explain the protocols, uh, in the campgrounds when, when, when you got bears in the area. Yeah. I'll just give you that. I've, uh... <laughs> I've had my fair share of uh, experiences with black bears, but um, this one looked like a male. Um, he was solo this time of the year. If it was a female and had cubs, then you have to be more cautious. Yeah. Um, but with him, he knew where we were. He was just passing through. You could tell he was panting. He was hot. He's probably just casing the joint for tonight. He'll be back. Um, they're nocturnal. They're scavengers. So um, as long as they know where you are, and 
you don't startle them. And like I said, with this being a male, you really won't have a problem as long as you don't approach them and do something stupid. You know, we stayed right here. He knew where we were, so we were fine. Even though we were 40 feet, 50 feet, but still, we didn't make any, you know, sudden moves towards them. But um, as far as hanging the food, you want to hang your food at least 10 to 12 feet from the ground. And you want to hang it at, um, at least four to six feet away from the tree. And you don't want the tree branch to be any bigger than four inches in diameter. Because they can actually go out on the branch and they can uh, get a hold of the rope and... Uh, what they'll do is they'll grab it and they'll actually try to um, either break it or swing the uh, food bag and bring it into them. And I've seen them do all that, so they're 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 not dumb. But uh, also, I've seen them do what they call bluff charge. I had this happen to me is on the Appalachian Trail. They know you hang your food, and in the morning when they hear the food bags drop when you Ooh. drop them, they'll do a bluff charge. They'll mm -hmm. come at you and they'll get on their front feet. Mm -hmm. I had that happen, and uh, yeah. So, so at night, you know, you you said you had a whistle. Yes. And and we talked a little bit about the light. You know what? You know at night, of course, if you if 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 someone sees a bear or hears a bear, they're gonna they're gonna alert everybody. Yeah. And, and it's just the thing that it happens. Uh, we heard that when we were in Yellowstone. Yeah. I think it was. And people started honking their horns on their cars, and of course, then you knew there was bears in the area. But they don't like the loud noise. Yeah, but we're on tents, and so so what what do we do at night? What's the what you know, what do you do, what do we do to be safe at night? As long as our food, toiletries like toothpaste, anything like that. Anything that makes a smell. Yeah, anything oh, that has laundry detergent. Laundry detergent, anything, yeah, because they're they're, they're going to be curious. And it's not only bears, rodents, we know this, raccoons. Yeah, all right. We had four raccoons all over our bikes last year in Canada. Same thing, we forgot to take our snacks out. So it's not only bears, but any critters. But we know we got, we're going to have company tonight. So, But, hey, it's part of the adventure. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So, yeah, that's, well, I don't know if tonight's over yet. But uh, for right now, we're, we're done. Yeah.